Kia ora. My name is Catherine Lining. I'm a policy fellow at Motu Economic and Public Policy Research based in Wellington, New Zealand. This video provides an overview of business engagement and policy design on the New Zealand Emissions Trading Scheme. This is part of a series of videos that are intended to help other jurisdictions learn from our experience. In this video, I'm going to provide a recap of the key features of the system, address roles for business in ETS design, provide some examples of ETS business engagement in New Zealand, and conclude with some thoughts on shifting the narrative. So our system has been operational since 2008. It was designed to cover all sectors of the economy and all six major greenhouse gases. However, the agriculture sector was deferred. Our system was linked to the Kyoto market internationally from 2008 until mid-2015. Our system currently operates as a domestic-only system. And finally, our system has included mechanisms to reduce exposure to emission prices for some participants. When we think about rules for business and ETS design, the place to start is in realizing that ETS is not a standard commodity market. This is a government-led market. Tradable units or allowances are created by government. The unit supply is determined by government. Prices can be managed by government. Trading activity is driven by government compliance periods. And while some participants must buy units, no participant is generally required to sell units. Governments and businesses have a reciprocal relationship in an ETS. So what does government need from business? Government needs leadership, information, cooperation, participation, compliance, and of course, mitigation. What does business need from government in return? Well, business also needs leadership and information. But for business to cooperate, it needs stable and predictable policy. For business to participate, it needs effective rules and systems. For business to comply, it needs low transaction costs. And for business to mitigate, it needs to be assured it will receive fair treatment. Businesses essentially face two choices with ETS design. Oppose ETS policy design or help shape ETS policy design. In New Zealand, we've had businesses in both camps. The government's approach to business engagement on ETS uh, design has basically included three strategies. The first is general engagement. These are conversations between officials and businesses to get a sense of key issues um, and solutions and to monitor progress. Once the government has been ready to issue formal policy proposals or to introduce legislation or regulations, then there are requirements for formal consultation. This usually involves written submissions and public meetings. During our early stage of ETS design, the government also created specialist advisory groups to provide expert input into design. And I'm going to profile a few of these. The first of these was the Climate Change Leadership Forum. This operated for the full year before the legislation was passed. It included 33 senior leaders, most of them at the chief executive or board executive level. They were also thought leaders in their communities. The private sector entities uh, represented electricity, industry, forestry, and agriculture. There were representatives from non-government organizations and research institutes. We also had direct government representation. The treasury secretary was there, as well as the chief executives from four government departments. The Climate Change Leadership Forum reported directly to ministers, reported to the ministers of finance and climate change. The forum focused on addressing ETS design, economic modeling, sustainability, business issues, and opportunities for New Zealand. This process helped to build an informed and engaged set of leaders who could improve, explain, and support the New Zealand emissions trading scheme. These became the early champions of the system. The government's engagement with Maori, the indigenous people of New Zealand, is also a vital priority. The Treaty of Waitangi guides the important relationship between the Crown and Māori. The key principles in the treaty are partnership, protection, and participation. Of course, the emissions trading scheme impacts directly on the Māori economy and other Māori interests. 
In addition to engaging with Maori through hui or gatherings across New Zealand, the government created a Maori reference group focused on the emissions trading scheme and sustainable land management policy. Research was undertaken to improve the understanding of climate change policy impacts specifically on Maori and the Maori economy. The government also created a series of technical advisory groups or TAGs. These provided expert input into the design of technical regulations and systems for emissions measurement and reporting, as well as allocation plans where relevant. The four TAGs covered forestry measurement, stationary energy and industrial processes, transport fuels, and agriculture. Once the system was operational, another interesting engagement process was the ETS review panel. The legislation required a formal review of the ETS to be led by an independent review panel in 2011. The government appointed seven panel members as individuals, not as sector representatives or advocates. However, the, mem the members did include some with business backgrounds and expertise. The government set the terms of reference for their work. This was an extensive review process involving public submissions and a major report. Some of the recommendations were adopted, others were not. The government then removed this review requirement from the next round of legislative amendments in 2012. Businesses have a really important opportunity to help shift the narrative around climate policy and climate action. Here in New Zealand, there have been four core excuses that have slowed our progress on climate policy. And this slide, I'm going to look at each of those excuses and examine how a new vision has been emerging for how we can address those issues. The first excuse, it's too hard. The new vision. New Zealand has huge mitigation advantages from its renewable energy resources and its land sector. New Zealand has a proud history of innovation. If New Zealand can't do this, then who will? And the solutions we create will also create new market opportunities for New Zealand. The second excuse, it's too expensive. Well, all of the economic studies suggest that the cost of inaction will outweigh the cost of action. And ETS will cost less than regulation. In New Zealand, our national brand depends on our clean green image. And finally, New Zealand will have to change if we want to stay competitive under global carbon limits. The third excuse, we're too small. New Zealand accounts for 0.17% of global greenhouse gas emissions. What's the new vision? Everyone is too small to fix climate change if acting alone. A collective problem demands collective solutions. And New Zealand leadership can influence others to act. This is a really important because New Zealand is dependent on the rest of the world to take action on climate change. The final excuse, it's too late, so why bother? Well, we can still make a difference and every ton helps. And we owe this to future generations. The Climate Leaders Coalition is a really powerful example of business leadership on climate change in New Zealand. This is a business-led voluntary initiative which has started since uh, 2018. The members take public commitments to measure and publicly report their greenhouse gas emissions, set a public emission reduction target, and work with their suppliers to reduce their emissions. The Climate Leaders Coalition has supported New Zealand's Paris commitments and supported the concept of legislation to create a climate change commission and carbon budgets, our Zero Carbon Act. The Climate Leaders Coalition now has about 107 members. It accounts for 60% of New Zealand's gross emissions and 33% of New Zealand's private sector GDP. It also accounts for about 170,000 workers in New Zealand. The Climate Leaders Coalition is helping to shape the climate change narrative in New Zealand. So I'll conclude with a few key messages. First, an ETS is a tool for business. It needs to work for business. And so it should be designed with business expertise. Secondly, an ETS can be viewed by business as a threat or an opportunity. Take the time to understand the opportunity. 
Finally, business can play a vital leadership role in changing the narratives about climate policy and climate action. MOTU has produced extensive resources on the New Zealand Emissions Trading Scheme, so I encourage you to check out our website or to get in touch with any questions, and my contact information is provided here. And I will leave you with some additional background information about MOTU. I want to wish you all of the best of success with your emissions trading journey. Kia kaha.